Hey guys, it's Vanessa, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing to you guys three of my go-to one pot pasta dishes. Hey, welcome back. If you are new to my channel, my name is Vanessa and I have lots of content geared towards cooking and grocery hauls and it's getting on that time of the year when I'm going to be doing a lot more shopping hauls. So if you're interested in that kind of content, make sure you take a second and click the subscribe button and click the all on the notification bell to make sure that you're notified when I post new videos. So I am sharing with you guys three of my favorite one pot pasta dishes. I'm going to share with you guys my lasagna helper, which is kind of a knockoff of the hamburger helper version. I'm gonna show you guys an old fashioned goulash, which is just a classic and a go-to. And it's one of those things that you always have the ingredients in your pantry. And one of the other ones I'm gonna show you is going to be a creamy broccoli chicken garlic pasta. And you can make it as light or as heavy as you would like. So if those sound good, stick around. The very first one I'm gonna show you guys is my lasagna helper. All right, now I am going to share all of the recipes down below in the description box. Anytime I post a video, make sure you guys just take a quick look down below to see if I post any additional tips and tricks that I might not mention in the video. All right, you guys, so like I said, the very first thing we're gonna get into right now is my lasagna helper. It is literally probably the easiest possible thing you can make in one of the most delicious one pot pastas that I think we've ever had in this house. All right, so the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm gonna start off by cooking off my ground beef now you can use as little or as much as you guys like it just depends on your family for me it can vary we are a blended family of six so sometimes i'm feeding six and sometimes i'm feeding three it just depends on who's here at any given night now when it comes to ground beef garlic and minced onion it's just kind of a given to me so i went ahead and added some of that to my ground beef and then i went ahead and added two cups of dried pasta i'm using bow tie here because it's just the closest to lasagna noodles if you wanted to use broken lasagna noodles by all means you could do that. Now I am adding enough marinara sauce and enough broth just to cover all of my pasta. I'm gonna add some Italian seasonings. Usually I add roughly a tablespoon to two tablespoons. And at this point, I'm just stirring it all to combine to make sure that everything comes together and the seasonings are all dispersed nice and good. Once it comes to a roaring simmer, I'm gonna put a lid on it and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Now check on your pasta, cause that could cook a lot quicker depending on how al dente you want it. So I'm also gonna add a good cup and a half to two cups of mozzarella cheese here, hence lasagna helper, and stir it in until it's melted. And guys, this is it. It really doesn't get much simpler than this meal. I'm telling you, it is so, so so good, you absolutely have to try it. All right, guys. So the next one I'm gonna show you is my Alfredo, which I don't really call it Alfredo because it's not very rich and there's not that much cheese in it. So that's why I kind of call it a creamy garlic broccoli chicken pasta. Let's call it that. You call it what you want because if you want to add cream and more cheese, then go for it. But here's everything that you're gonna need. It is listed here. And all I'm gonna do, the only difference with this one is it doesn't all cook right in one pot. I do boil the pasta separately. I just feel like if I tried to cook it with the chicken, it would really annihilate the chicken because that kind of happens when you boil it. <laughs> all right, so all I'm gonna do here is I went ahead and grated up some fresh Parmesan cheese. That's kind of what inspired this dish originally because I had some in the fridge and I wanted to use it up. I went ahead and cut up some chicken breasts into bite-sized pieces and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cook them up in this frying pan, which is our one pot, in a little bit of olive oil. I'm just gonna season it first with just a little bit of pepper and get it about three quarters of the way cooked before we move to the next step. Mm -hmm. 
So here I'm just showing you where I went ahead and pureed or just uh, pulsed up some frozen broccoli because I didn't really want whole broccoli in our pasta and I knew that I still wanted some notes of uh, broccoli. So this is actually a really good tip if you wanna sneak it in your soup or anything like that, go ahead and give that a try. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and season that chicken with about a teaspoon of Better Than Bouillon. That's a really good tip, you guys. It's not just meant for broth. You can use it as seasoning. And you notice I didn't add any salt to my chicken because there is quite a bit of salt in it. I've added about two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. You can add whichever one you like. And I'm gonna add about a cup of broth just to scrape everything off the bottom. And once that comes to a pretty good simmer, I'm gonna add my one cup of milk. Now this is where you can substitute for cream if you'd rather. And you could also thicken it up. Uh, with the broth, if you wanted to thicken it, you would take the broth and then you would add your about two tablespoons of cornstarch to two tablespoons of water, create a slurry, mix that in with the broth and then add your milk and you'll have a little bit of a thicker pasta. For me, it didn't matter because now we're at the point where I am spooning the penne right into the pan, which the starches in the water are actually going to thicken my pasta a little bit. Now I'm gonna add my Parmesan cheese and we're gonna stir it all together. Now you're gonna see it's not super creamy because it's not cream. I do use lactose-free milk. That's just how our household rolls, so you do you. I'm just gonna go ahead and stir in the broccoli. I didn't have to cook it or anything because it's so finely minced up that you can stir it in and it's gonna cook and be good to go immediately. Here I am, I'm just giving it a little taste test and it gets two thumbs up of approval. You guys, this is one of those pasta dishes that when I cooked it and Jamie was watching me make it, he was hesitant whether or not he was going to like it. And as soon as he ate it, he said it was literally one of his favorite dishes. Though, if you know by now, he says that about every dish that I make for him, which I'm eternally grateful for that. So I topped mine with a little fresh grated Parmesan cheese and it was perfection. All right, guys, so for this last one, I know you're thinking, did you not just so show us pasta and ground beef and tomatoes? Yes, I did. That was lasagna, this is goulash, and you know they are not the same thing. So for me, I'm just gonna list everything here that you guys are gonna need for this old-fashioned goulash. It is super, super basic, you guys, and I used canned mushrooms because in our house, we like canned mushrooms. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and chop up an onion. And can you just take a look at how tiny Charlie was here? He was so small, you guys. Now his nose uh, well exceeds our countertop. He's about 190 pound English Mastiff, not even a year old yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and dice up about uh, half an onion. It was a fairly large onion. I'm gonna brown up my ground beef. I'm gonna add my mushrooms and I'm gonna add some garlic. To me, this is the trifecta of goulash, you guys. Mushroom, onions, garlic. No brainer. Go ahead and combine this all until it's all well mixed together. And then I'm gonna add some more Italian seasoning. Now you're gonna see later, I'm gonna add some more seasonings because this brand is not my favorite. So sometimes I top it up with like clubhouse, oregano, and basil and stuff. I'm gonna add my jar of Classico sweet basil marinara. That is my favorite and you will see I use that for all pastas. I'm gonna add a great big 798 ml can of tomatoes, which I believe is like a 16 ounce can of tomatoes. I'm gonna add the juice because I want all the liquid. And I'm just going at it again, you guys, with more chicken broth. Now you could use beef broth if you want don't get too worked up about how much liquid to put in the worst case scenario is your pasta is going to absorb all the liquid and your pasta is just going to be very cooked it's still going to taste good but just don't get too wrapped up about it but typically for two cups of uncooked pasta you need about four cups of liquid to cook it but you judge by your pan and your pot. So there you go, I went ahead and added some more and I'm gonna throw a couple of bay leaves in there because they are a little bit smaller than I would have liked them to be. And then we're just gonna pop a lid on this one as well once we add the pasta. Uh, I have, like I said, about two cups and you can see I'm kind of gauging it here and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest when I realize that I have enough liquid to cover the amount of pasta that was in the bowl.
Now here, I'm just making sure that I absolutely stir this up really well because I want all of the pasta to be cooked. You don't want any kind of sitting above the liquid or on top of your ingredients. And again, like I said, slap a lid on it, Check it at about 10 to 12 minutes because it just varies. Sometimes I cook this and it's done in 12 and sometimes at 15 minutes it's not cooked, so who knows. But here it is, you guys. This was an amazing meal and I would say we probably have this about once a month. All right, guys, so that was it. Those were my three favorite go-to one-pot pastas. It's just one of those things that I always seem to have in my fridge. I have chicken breasts in my fridge, I have frozen broccoli, I have ground beef, and I always have pasta and canned tomatoes. So it seems like a go-to in my house. Is it a go-to in your house? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what is your go-to pasta dish. And if you try any of these, make sure you're following me on Instagram so you can go ahead and tag me in your posts and let me know what you thought. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and I will see all of you in my next one. Take care.